before we go afloat, there are some important bits of safety information we need to consider. The sea is a dynamic, changeable environment that isn't without its risks. Having said that, if we're suitably equipped and we have the right experience and we're sensible with our decision making, there's no reason why we can't go afloat on the sea in our sea kayaks and stay safe and have a fun time. The information that we're going to share in this lesson isn't completely exhaustive and we can go into some of the subject areas in much more detail. Indeed, we do that in some of our other lessons. For example, our rescues course, our navigation and planning course, and some of the later lessons on equipment. So let's take a look at some of the top tips and top things we need to consider to stay safe when we're afloat. Who do we paddle with? A kayak club is a great way of enjoying the sport. And around the world, there are thousands of clubs that we can join where we can spend time with suitably experienced fellow paddlers that are gonna help keep us safe and share knowledge and information with us. We can often find, find information about local sea kayak clubs on Facebook pages and often through our national governing body, like here in the UK, British Canoeing, and also we have the American Canoe Association and similar organisations. These organisations can share information about local clubs and we can go and check them out for a great place to learn and progress our sea paddling. We can also paddle with fellow experienced paddlers. So maybe I've got a paddling buddy and we share time on the water together. Paddling with somebody else is always going to make our paddles more fun and safer. Although paddling on our own solo does have some rewards, it isn't without its risks. And we need to be really aware of these. Paddling solo means if I do have any problems, then nobody is there to help me or to get help easily. We do find that some paddlers do go out on the water on their own, but you'll find that they're often experienced and well aware of the risks and suitably equipped and prepared to look after themselves. Another great option is to book a qualified and experienced guide or coach. They can often give you tips to help improve your paddling and help keep you safe on the water and maybe progress into some slightly more challenging conditions that we wouldn't feel confident going into. Environmental considerations. So we're thinking here about how wind, swell and tide can impact our day. We've done a really exhaustive lesson on navigation tidal planning and this is a great training resource to deepen your knowledge on this subject area. We need to understand the impacts of the wind speed and direction and what that's going to look like. Being particularly aware of winds that are blowing offshore because ultimately they're going to take us out to sea and then also the impact that onshore winds are going to have where they're going to generate rougher more dynamic conditions. We can also have areas where we'll get up and down movement that isn't just generated by wind, where we've got underlying ground swell. Often this swell can seem okay in certain sheltered bays, but once we venture around headlands, it can start to feel much bigger. Tide is a massive subject area, and there is a lot to it. It's not simply a case as when the tide comes in, everything moves toward the, towards the shore, and when the tide goes out, everything moves away from the shore. It doesn't just work like that. With tide, we're often referring to the currents that move along the shoreline. And in certain places, like here on Anglesey, those currents can flow much, much faster than we can paddle against. Having said that, there are plenty of areas we can go to where we can keep out of those tides and have a safe, enjoyable day on the water. Before we get afloat, it's a good idea to tell somebody where we're going, so a suitable shore contact. Leave with them some information about your departure time and your arrival back at that point. But also we want to share some information with what we would like them to do if we're not back in time. Are the conditions that we're going out paddling in within our ability? Ultimately, what we want to try and avoid as sea kayakers is accidental capsizes in conditions that are beyond our capability. Capsizing and spending a long time out of our boat in the water is where problems can happen. It can become exhausted, cold, 
and things don't end very well. I need to be thinking about whether the conditions I go into, I'm happy to look after myself, and if me or one of my paddlers do, does happen to capsize, have we got the skills to put them back in their boat? Dealing with a capsize. So are we happy if, if somebody in our group happens to come out of their boat and accidentally capsizes? Can we comfortably empty their kayak and get them back in and get them back to safety? Also, if we do decide that we're going to paddle on our own, and we've talked about the risks with this, can I self-rescue? So I do I have some suitable methods for getting back into my kayak and getting myself back to safety? When we're afloat, we need to be able to get help if we need it. So that is contacting the appropriate emergency services, whether that's the Coast Guard or the lifeboat or your local emergency provider. There are many different ways of contacting help and we're doing a lesson in our equipment section that goes into each of these methods in more detail. But essentially, we can boil them down to a mobile phone, a VHF radio, pyrotechnics and flares, and PLBs, or personal location beacons. We need to make sure that we've got at least one of these, but ideally we're covering a few bases just in case we don't have phone signal or just in case a flare doesn't work, for example. We also need to make sure they're accessible so we can get to them, perhaps having them in a buoyancy aid pocket or in a deck bag so we can easily get to them. We also need to know how to use them. There's no point in us having these bits of safety equipment if we don't know what to do in an emergency and how we use them. When we're afloat, we're going to carry some safety kit to deal with problems that might arise throughout the day. As mentioned, this list isn't completely exhaustive and depending on our location, commitment, we might choose to carry more equipment or perhaps sometimes tone it down a little bit. I'm going to think about taking split paddles in case I break a paddle. I'm going to think about taking a pump in case I need to pump the boat out. I'm going to carry a first aid kit should myself or another member of the group become injured. I might choose to take a repair kit in case something becomes damaged on my boat or perhaps somebody puts a hole in their boat. I'm going to carry a tow line in case I need to tow somebody who's injured or tired back to the beach. I'm going to take some spare clothing and maybe some ways of keeping people warm or myself warm should I end up in the water and getting cold and wet. And I'm going to make sure on the journey I have a map and a compass with me so I know where I am, where I'm going, and I'm probably going to, going to include some details on my trip plan in a map case that I can easily see. When we're afloat, we need to be wearing appropriate kayak clothing. A personal flotation device or a buoyancy aid is going to keep us afloat if we do come out of our boat. And there's many different types to choose from. A spray deck or a spray skirt is going to stop the boat from being swamped in conditions and stop the boat filling with water. And we might choose to wear a helmet, particularly if we're paddling in more dynamic conditions. The outerwear that I wear is really important. We often talk about dressing for immersion and even in water that can feel to the touch relatively warm, we can still get hypothermia. The issues of spending prolonged periods of time in cold water are by far one of the biggest risks to us as sea paddlers. A dry suit has really revolutionized how we can stay safe as a paddler and this is a great way of dressing for immersion but we also have wetsuits and two-piece kit. We've done a detailed lesson on what clothing we can wear as a paddler and the advantages and disadvantages of these. But make sure we're dressed so that if we do go in the water, we're going to stay warm. Our boat. We need to make sure, sure our boat is seaworthy and suitable to go out on the ocean. The boat that I have here, I check over regularly to make sure there's no damage or holes that are going to compromise its seaworthiness. 
This boat has bulkheads, so the boat's divided up into sections. So even if I did capsize and this central, central section swamps with water, I know the whole boat isn't going to sink. Certain boats that we may choose to go afloat in might not have fixed bulkheads, in which case we need to make sure that we have airbags to reduce the amount of volume inside that kayak so that in the event of a capsize, it doesn't fully swamp and become completely unseaworthy. Paddling as a group of peers or paddling as a club can often throw up some challenges. Communication is the key. Before we get afloat with our group of paddlers or our team of paddlers, let's have a chat about the plan for the day and discuss some safety measures that we can put in as a group to make sure we stay safe. I always like to make sure we discuss who's going to lead the trip and how we can stay close together so that communication becomes easier. It's also worth discussing what we're going to do in the event of a problem, so if somebody does capsize. It's really important that we also discuss what safety equip equipment we're carrying as a group. Don't just assu assume because Simon always brings his VHF radio, he's got it with him today, therefore I'm going to leave mine behind. This can lead us into some mistakes. So have a chat, discuss what safety equipment everyone's got, and make sure that we've got enough bits of kit to stay safe on the water as a group. Look after our bodies. So it's a good idea to stretch and make sure that we're staying flexible and we're warming up before we exert ourselves to any real physical activity. We might have our own warm-up routines that we may do on the shore, or perhaps we just have a little gentle paddle, do some stretches in the boat to get things moving. We also need to stay hydrated and fueled. It's really hard to push our bodies on long day trips if we're not putting fluids into our body and thinking about eating the right things. So there's some top tips to make sure that your day out on the water is safe and enjoyable. Don't forget that the sea is a dynamic, quickly changing environment. And if in doubt, it's always best to err on the side of caution. And remember, if you haven't already, check out our rescues and navigation course to really improve your safety on the water.